Well, here you are. You're all musicians and artists, and I'm here to tell you that uh, the title of this talk is The Ultimate Unnecessity of All Art. I don't know if that's the correct word or what, but the unnecessity of all art. If we think of what's the purpose of art, um, by that I mean all art forms, what I'm always reminded of is, is there's, a, there's a, a line in, in, in Shakespeare's Henry V, it says, uh, the, the chorus says, a little touch of Harry in the night. Harry, of course, being Henry V. And uh, the, the purpose of art is to help you see, to help you feel, to help you f know a little touch of God in the art. A little touch of Harry in the night, a little touch of God in the art. You see, that's the purpose of art, is to help you find this little touch of God. I've, I've said before when I, when I did my photography era, you look through the viewfinder, you zoom, you focus, you shift around, you frame it, then all of a sudden, ah, you get a feeling with a capital F. You don't know what the feeling is, but you know it's a very special feeling, so you capture it on the film for somebody else. I've got it now. I don't need it. It's inside me, but, but to make it art, and not just self-expression, as it were, you, you take the picture to now show it to others so that they will be benefited for the art. Because the purpose of the art is not just for me to get a little touch of Harry, but for others through it to get a little touch of Harry. So they'll then go off and get their own little touches of Harry and show it to other people who will then get their little touches. And so it will go on. But and the, and, the, and the art of art is knowing when what you are looking at, what you are doing, what you are creating, if that's the right word for it, is this little touch of Harry, or not. You see? So the, the, the purpose of it is to refine, refine your perception and refine your presentation so that you are giving a, a truer touch of Harry. And as we've shown, for example, in terms of visual, how certain framings, certain framing dimensions will enhance this more than, say, the usual format of, uh, of that photographers use, for example. But it's, we're not talking just about photography, but, but everywhere. And what and, and perhaps one of the best ways to summarize this feeling is what Rudolf Otto called the numinous. Actually, he says he invented the word, but actually it was used before him. And his book is called in English, The Concept of the, I think, the Idea of the Holy. And in that, he gives a quotation from Ruskin, which I'll, I'll read out to you as a definition of uh, as, as a good example of the numinous. And Ruskin writes, There was a continual perception of sanctity in the whole of nature, from the slightest thing to the vastest, an instinctive awe mixed with delight, an indefinable thrill, such as we sometimes imagine to indicate the presence of a disembodied spirit when after being some time away from when i first when after being some times away from i first got to the shore of a mountain river where the brown water circled around the pebbles when i first saw the swell of distant land against the sunset the joy in nature seemed to me to come of a sort of heart hunger satisfied with the presence of a great and holy spirit you see? And that, one way or another, is what the artist, whatever his format, whatever his medium, is trying to capture and convey. 
you see, as Ruskin, I think, did beautifully with his words. And that's what Otto called the numinous. Uh, it, it's said that, that, I think very beautifully, that Emerson believed that every moment in life could be epiphanic, could be a manifestation of divinity. Saying the same sort of thing. And I would just say it's a manifestation of belovedness. It, it doesn't matter. So, so the feeling that, that, that is the purpose of art, the feeling that we go into the art to find for ourselves more readily than elsewhere, and that we then want to pass on to others, is this feeling basically of the numinous, of the epiphanic, of the hierophanic, or of belovedness. It's, it's all just words. I've talked before about a man, I think his name was Fritz Densher, I forget now. Um, I was flying from, we were from Los Angeles to Sydney, I think it was. And uh, he sat down beside me on the plane seat and immediately put a little, put the blanket over his head and he was gone for about eight hours. Then he woke up and he told me, he was an old man, that he was a retired employee for KLM Airlines. <clears throat> and he could fly around the world for 10% of the fare, but he was always on standby. And he went, he said, I go all around the world to show people the glory of God. Now, because he was on standby, all of his possessions was in this little uh, carry-on bag. And uh, he was... Uh, it was very, very unusual. He had like a little piece of tin and a little pair of uh, cuticle scissors. That's how he'd shave. <laughs> you know, look at the piece of tin as a mirror and so forth. And so everything for this world trip that he went on, all, pretty well all the time, was in this bag. He had a, obviously a change of shirt or two in there. And, and in the middle of it is a Hasselblad camera and, and this large exercise book. And uh, on each page, he showed me on the left-hand side of the page, is a photograph. And there were photographs there of Bolivian Andes, of, uh, of uh, Aboriginal this, of flowers from there, of, uh, you know, of whatever it was, all around the world. Now on the other side, he'd, he'd somehow, he, he, he's written in a number of languages and with a multicolored pencil. So every letter is like multicolored in some way. He has given a description of what this picture means in terms of everything. And he said, and it's the whole point is to show the glory of God. So each page is a representation of the glory of God. So you know, that's, that's a high form of art. You may say his photographs aren't too good. You may say his writing's not particularly as good as Elliot or something, but that's the purpose. He's using his art to show the purpose of God, the, the reason, the, the existence of God, the belovedness, the numinous, the epiphanic. That's the purpose of art, you see? Never mind the technique. But the problem with all this is it's completely unnecessary. You don't need to frame here to frame the picture this way or that way. You don't need to take the picture, which is why I stopped photography. You don't need to, to produce the book. You don't need to hear the symphony because, because it's everywhere. The spirit, the belovedness, the, the, the numinous, the holy is everywhere. It's just we require it to be particularized and abstracted in, in that way which will show it to us. If I take the picture this way, if I play the notes this way, if you play these notes this way, if you use these colors, if you look at this but not that, this way and not that way, then, ah, you see the numinous, ah, there you get the feeling. But it's everywhere. It's everywhere. You don't need 
to focus the camera. You don't need the camera. You don't need the music. You certainly don't need to have it played this way because it's everywhere. What the art does is it just makes it easier for us initially to see it in a particular place, in a particular way. But once you've got the feeling, then you can start to find it everywhere. And you don't need the art. You don't, a blank wall will show it just as well as, as a wall of Ruskins or Turners or whatever you like. It's not, it's not necessary. In fact, it will be more because then it's not particularized by a particular artist. It's just everywhere. All the art is doing is telling you, if I have found it here, you can find it everywhere because now you've known what the feeling is. And there's more feeling than what I have because I have particularized. You see, if you look around, every artist has to take a little bit of the 360 degrees. He can't do it all. Even if we forget about the time element, he can't do it all. Right? No one can compose uh, a, a, a cosmic symphony. You have to particularize it. You have to abstract. Now that abstraction, if it's done correctly, that is with the right purpose, that is with minimal misprocessing, will give you a fairly good idea of the feeling. But you, but you can never really do it because it's everywhere. And it is, you just go everywhere, anywhere, there it is. So what the artist is really should be saying is, I'm helping you to find it. Now, throw the art away. It's not necessary. It has opened the door, you go in now. This is the door of the highest perception. You go in now, you don't need the art. It has served its purpose. It's taken you to the numinous. Now throw it away. So the purpose of your art is really to make it unnecessary. <laughs>